that brings us to our final topic. Astros midseason MVP for 2023. Josh, I'm going to let you go first. We're going to go out of order on this one. Josh, who is okay. your Astros 2023 midseason MVP? I'm going to go off the beaten path a little bit. Not not the chalky answer here. So I mean, how about Chaz McCormick, man? Like with what you've gotten out of Jake Myers in center field, it it hasn't turned into what they hoped he would be in previous seasons. It, it, he's just not the answer. It, it's not working out for Jake. So for Chaz to provide the defense. The he's one of their better hitters now on the team too. He's just uh, he's a spark plug for them, man. He gets them going. He he comes through in the clutch, and that's that's something Altuve is really good at. When when Altuve got him that insurance run with that that home run the other night, Chaz does things like that, and uh, I'd like to give him a little credit. I know we could all pick the you know the Frombers of the world, guys like that, but let's give Chaz a little bit of love. I will pick the Fromber of the world. <laughs> uh, Jordan had a chance to perhaps lap the field, but. Attendance is part of the grade. And with all the time that he's missed, as monstrous as the numbers that he was putting up, you know, he has zero chance to be in the American League MVP race unless he's back very soon out of the All Star break and is just incredible over the last two months. And of course, Shohei Otani would have to suddenly retire. Uh, but for the Astros to this point, I go with Fromber, who has been arguably, you know, despite the hiccups in a couple of recent starts and that ankle better get and stay right. Uh, he's been as good as any starter in the American League, arguably been the best starter in the American League with McClanahan uh, having a hiccup or two and his own injury issues with the, the race right now. Uh, that Fromber, you know, averages nearly seven innings per start, pitching to a 2.49 earned run average. Um, for those who love war, he's he's best on the Astros in war. So I will go with Fromber Valdez and we'll see if that ankle is right and he makes a start. Does Dusty go with him to be the American League's starting pitcher in the All-Star game? It's hard not to pick Fromber just because he's been a guy, especially with all of the injuries on this pitching staff and as thin as this pitching staff has been, he's been a guy who you had just been able to trust that could come in and uh, you know be your stopper and, and kind of you know, stop the bleeding. We were really looking forward to seeing uh, Fromber uh, in this matchup in Arlington kind of come in and do his thing. Uh, the Astros were able to take care of business even in his absence. But I'm going to go with Kyle Tucker. And that's, you know, he's hitting 292 with an 853 OPS. But his last seven games really tell the story. Is four, He's hitting 481 with 13 RBI. I, I think what's... You know, what we all count on with with Tucker is he's going to give you those numbers. He's going to give you, you know, big numbers every year. Uh, not gigantic numbers, not superstar numbers, but consistent numbers. But it's kind of this thing where it's uh, he goes on these really cold streaks where it just looks like he is completely lost at the plate. And then somehow he just finds his way out of it. And that's where he's at. That's the stage he's at right now, which is he went through a couple of weeks of scuffling. And man, you know, to hit almost 500 over a seven game period is pretty impressive uh, to do it against, you know, some of the, the, you know, again, going into Arlington and going toe to toe with the league's best offense. I, I just, you know, tip my hat to him because especially with the loss of Jordan, you know, he just now is now tying uh, where Jordan is at an RBI, but the thing is, is that you know uh, availability is one of the best abilities, and Jordan, you know, puts up gaudy numbers when he's in. But Tucker, slow and steady, wins the race for me. Uh, Tucker's in your lineup, uh, playing a lot more games than most of the guys on this roster are playing right now. Maybe he should sit a few more games. As a matter of fact, is maybe what I'm trying to say. But yeah, for me, it's Kyle Tucker. Um, so that. I think what's interesting though is all three of us had a different answer, and all I think all three of us had uh, you know pretty good uh, reasonings for our our uh, our decisions there. But um, I guess one of my questions is we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the show about Jose Abreu and kind of how he's turned it on at the end of the season. Charlie, what are the odds that by the end of the season here? Abreu inserts himself into this conversation for team MVP for the Astros. Well, generally, I'm a never say never guy, so I'll adhere to that. But I'll go with 0.000, stop me at some point, 
because you can't uh, men in black wand away the first two months of the season where he was the worst everyday player in baseball. That's a third of the season where he was an unmitigated disaster, along with the fact I doubt he's going to hit 20 home runs over the last two months of the season, the way he fell off a cliff with the power last year. Um, But that's all fine as long as he's just good Jose Abreu, 800 OPS type Jose Abreu, because with Altuve back, if he stays healthy, Bregman's still been two fits and starts, but you know at least he draws walks, creates traffic on the bases, and well, he has a propensity for grand slams, especially when opposition outfielders are pitching. <laughs> um, but you get Jordan back, and you have Tucker. Now, I'm not going to quite say the 2017 Astros offense, top to bottom, but you at least have a reasonable facsimile at that point with what McCormick is doing, and if Yiner Diaz gets at bats hitting seventh or eighth the way you structure the lineup if you have all your hands healthy and on deck uh but team uh team mvp for abreu i think that would uh, require a bit of recency bias those first two months two months of the season did happen yeah it if we're gonna do some silver linings though i like the fact that we're seeing him pull the ball and i believe that the shot in the finale was 452 feet so i mean we're seeing some crazy exit velo we're seeing that power so he shows it to us from time to time. If he could just be a little more consistent, the last last 30 games, he's hitting 291 on base percentage, 326, and slugging over 500. He's just got to continue to do that. We know he's a late starter. He loves playing in the, the hot summer months. We're right in the middle of those right now. So uh, hopefully the, the glass is half full. If he can just be good, he doesn't have to be great, that would really help this Astros lineup. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Another episode in the books for Stone Cold Strohs. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give us a five-star rating wherever you get your podcast. Charlie, Josh, and I will be with you next week, but you don't have to wait that long to get your Houston sports fix. All you have to do is subscribe to Sports Map Houston on YouTube, and John Granado, Lance Zerline, and Josh Jordan will have you covered there. And remember, it's 97.5 and 92.5 on your FM dial. If you're uh, uh, driving around Houston and want to listen to some sports, I want to thank you to uh, producer Jack Brame for pushing all the buttons, and thanks to everyone listening. And until next time, go Strips. 